Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 684. I had the white pieces kicked off with d4. My opponent goes knight f6, and I go c4. And now uh, black has lots of choices here. The two top choices are uh, e6 and g6. e6 preparing a Nimzo, and g6 preparing a, a King's Indian or a Grinfeld. Also c5 going into a Benoni or a Binko Gambit. All very interesting. Um, knight c6 is also an interesting move. Uh, the two knights tango. And um, let's see, I faced this recently at the uh, U.S. Amateur West in the over-the-board game, and I played uh, knight f3, and I think that's a better way to play. I got quite a good position out of the opening. Here I played knight c3 kind of reflexively, not, not taking the time to think, uh, but moving quickly in the opening as uh, I sometimes do, especially in these blitz games. But it's not, um, <clears throat> well, technically it's okay, I should say. Um, but it leads to the kind of positions that the, uh, either either black gets equality or he gets the kind of position that he's looking for. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, after knight c3, black plays the move uh, e5 here. And then the uh, two knights tango line continues with d5, kicking this knight around. The knight routes over here to e7. Um, you can play e4, and then the knight goes to g6. So that's an example of the two knights tango. And uh, this position, the uh, if you ask a chess engine, it will say that uh, white is doing very well here. Uh, it likes all the, the big space that white has, and uh, black's position is kind of cramped. But uh, in practice, um, this is a, a difficult position to break down. and. Um, so white space advantage may not count for a whole lot. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of position that black is looking for. He's got his knights over here on the king's side, so his king is secure, and he can uh, start sniping at the uh, pawns in the center, counterattacking. So so even though the chess engine thinks white is just uh, much better here, uh, <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. So um, anyway, I avoided playing that way. And so after um, e5 here, I just took the pawn. And uh, we're out of the opening book, so I can skip that. Um, but what happens in this case is that black does equalize. Um, we get a position after e3. This position resembles a, a Budapest gambit, but uh, but black is a tempo up. <laughs> so so I'm playing the Budapest gambit a tempo down, and uh, not the yeah the Budapest gambit. That's right. Because usually this knight has to go out to here and then back to here to round up the pawn. That's the typical. The typical line with the Budapest Gambit, and here he's just gotten to round up that pawn. He hasn't had to waste uh, any knight moves. Um, yeah, so maybe I'm even two tempos down if you think about it. So I played this move knight f3, which is a bit uh, provocative. Um, it does allow uh, black this maneuver to mess up my pawns, and he goes for it. And the chess engine says this is a correct play. He can take either knight first. I sort of expect him to take this knight first because it comes with check. But actually, bishop takes comes with check, so it doesn't really matter. These two, these two exchanges, uh, if you plan to play both of them, you can play them in either order. And we get this position. Let's go ahead and castle for black. And uh, the chess engine likes black here. It thinks black is a little better. Uh, but there are things uh, to look forward to in uh, white's position, positive aspects to white's position. Uh, one of them is he's got the bishop pair, which uh, black doesn't. Black has a bishop and a knight. And the second thing is, he's got uh, lots of open lines. So um, so I think that is uh, compensation for the damaged pawn structure. And I'm, I'm perfectly willing to play this kind of position, even uh, in an over-the-board game, not just in a blitz game. And um, But the chess engine thinks black is a little better. So you can evaluate that for yourself. <clears throat> anyway, um, it stays in the range of about even or better for... Uh, Let's, let's say better for black for the next few moves. I go bishop d3, just some normal developing moves. He goes d6. I go h3. I wanted to keep his bishop from coming out here and harassing my queen. He goes queen e7. I castle. And he goes c6. So at this point, it shifts. Uh, evaluation shifts a little bit. Uh, to keep that slight edge that black has, the chess engine is recommending playing rook to b8. Um, that frees up his bishop to move and without making any commitments of the pawn structure. After c6, now the game is in the range of about even. So bishop a3, I mean, it did leave this weak pawn here, which I can immediately target. He wants to push that pawn forward, um, I guess, and so he goes about trying to uh, unpin it. Um, 
Yeah, it's not clear that he wants to push that pawn forward here because actually whenever he pushes the d-pawn forward, it helps me uh, undouble my, my uh, doubled c-pawns here. So uh, anyway, that, I think that's why the chess engine prefers keeping these pawns back. So anyway, I've got, I've got a target to play against. He goes rook to e8. Um, I go rook f to d1, putting a little more indirect pressure over here. And now he decides he needs to do something about it, and he plays the move queen to e5. And that move is a blunder. Um, so first of all, let's look at what the chess engine recommends. It wants to play c5, which is uh, kind of an ugly move, actually, because it leaves this hole in uh, <clears throat> this hole in black's position. But maybe there's no great way to exploit it. I mean, uh, I can't easily maneuver a bishop there because he can trade it off. But it does seem to create or leave this uh, this permanent weakness on um, d6 that I can target. So it gives me some play. Let's see, the chess engine goes bishop c2, immediately taking a look at that pawn. Bishop e6, developing and taking a look at my uh, my advanced c pawn, which is undefended, queen f4, and rook a to d8 coming over to defend that pawn. So for what it's worth, the chess engine rates this as about even. After the move he plays, he plays queen e5, and that's a mistake. So if you miss the game or if you... Uh, want uh, the tactics exercise trying to recall uh, what's going on. Imagine you're black and you're doing a blunder check, I guess, and you're thinking about the move queen e5, and uh, you have this feeling there might be a, mis a, uh, a tactic there. What is the tactic that you're missing <laughs> when you play queen e5? Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now, so pause the video if you want some time to think about it. He did play queen e5. And the tactic is bishop takes d6. And this actually works. This is kind of a cute trick. If he takes the bishop, then I take here with check, and he loses the whole queen. It's a queen for two bishops, so um, it's not, not a good trade for black. So he has to do something else. Uh, he could just move his queen to e6, just dropping back like that. Um, he took on c3. Both those are rated as about the same by the chess engine. It gives white a plus one advantage along here. So I'm a pawn up. Yeah, even though, uh, even though I guess in this line when he takes on c3, he gets the pawn back. So strictly speaking, the material is even here. But I still have one material advantage, which is I have the bishop pair, and uh, and my pieces are just uh, a lot better now. When his queen comes over here to grab the pawn, um, you know I can start chasing it around, gain some tempos. Where if the queen went back to c6, he would be a pawn down, but uh, his pieces would be better. Um, anyway, so I played rook a to c1, he goes queen to a5. Taking a look at my a pawn, I went ahead and played a3. He went uh, c5, and now I retreated my bishop. Um, actually, there's no, no big need to retreat that bishop. The chess engine likes uh, playing e4 here. There's uh, some cute tactics in this position. If, um, for example, if the queen takes the pawn, I can push on to e5 with tempo against the knight, and if the knight moves, then once again I have bishop takes h7 check, <laughs> hitting the queen. So uh, so actually that, that pawn is uh, is defended in this position by the move e4. So that's a clever idea. Um, and, uh, and also the pawn from e4. After e4, if he moves the knight first rather than trying to grab, then he can push on to e5, protecting this bishop here, cementing it in that... Uh, Annoying location. It's kind of a thorn in the uh, black side there, and still this tactic it defends the a pawn. So uh, interesting play. So I, this retreat of my bishop is not not the best move, but it still keeps an advantage. Um, and he could take on a3 now. He's got time to deal with this uh, after e4. Let's, well, I'll put it on the board. If he takes on a3 and I play e4, he has time to move the queen back before I get in e5. But I would still play e5 and push the knight around and get something. The engine thinks that um, white still has a plus one advantage in this position. Let's see, he just went to a6 directly, placed my bishop uh, to h4, and now he made a second mistake. So there's another chance for you to... Uh, uh, yeah, oh Well, anyway, the, the chess engine just wants to play something like h6. Um, just kind of a waiting move and giving a little lift to the king, which is often useful. Um, and just uh, kind of hanging around, nothing nothing big to do here for black. But uh, bishop d7 seems to be, uh, or actually is a blunder. 
so once again, uh, pretend you're black and you're playing a bishop d7. And before playing that move, you want to do a blunder check. So can you spot the blunder here? Okay, uh, pause the video again if you want some time to think about it. Uh, he did play this move. And, uh, and the tactic is uh, I just need to get rid of this uh, bishop or get rid of this knight <laughs> and then uh, and then this bishop is kind of loose over here so I take the knight let's see he could take back with the pawn or the queen he took with the queen I continued to trade and then at the end of this I win another pawn because I take on h7 and when he takes back it's a discovered attack on his bishop and it's more than just winning another pawn it's also uh, gives me a very active uh, position for my rook so we go into a double rook end game where i've got uh, one two three four four on two over here I, yeah, actually i'm just one pawn up here that's right because he got a pawn back at one point but uh, well i'm going to round up one of these pawns so i will end up being two pawns up uh, and more as as it progresses just because of the activity of my rooks um, so anyway, I keep uh, that winning edge all the way through the rest of the game. Um, and I don't want to go through move by move. It'd get too long. So let's just go through. But I did have um, a feeling that I was uh, losing control a little bit when um, Black doubled his, pawn, his rooks like this. But looking at it with a chess engine, it seems like there was no um, big opportunity um, for uh, black, but there was there was one interesting line that I wanted to get to. So anyway, we both uh, managed to create some past pawns, but mine is more advanced. Plus, I have all these pawns over here on the uh, king side, which I can use after we trade off the uh, the past pawns. And um, so this seems to be okay the way I played this. But right here, there was an interesting tactic um, based on his advanced king position. And, uh, and now he's got a threat on this pawn here. And uh, he can't grab the pawn. I, I calculated I could take here. But what he can do is uh, this interesting move, rook to a1. And now, let's see, I take here with check. That was my idea, drive his king away from that pawn and defend it. Well, he's still attacking it. But, but his king, uh, having done that, his king is now in a position to support this pawn. And... Uh, and my rook is, I have to trade off that rook. It's got nowhere to go. It's pinned. So I take, he takes. Um, king runs up here. And now he pushes his pawn. I put my rook behind it. He comes over with the king to defend it. That's what I mean. The king is close enough. And uh, let's see, I can start pushing these pawns. Eventually, at some point, he grabs this pawn. Or I could have pushed it and distracted his rook that way. But um, And then I can push again. But he can push this pawn. And with his king uh, defending that pawn, uh, he's actually going to win my rook. Uh, let's see. I keep pushing on the king side, though. And the thing that saves me here, which is very useful to know, is that um, all of these pawns here, play h5, with two pawns, he's just in time to stop these pawns with his uh, rook. So his rook can hold up these two pawns. If they had been... If I had gotten one step further, the two pawns can actually overpower the rook if they're on the sixth rank. But here it's on the fifth and sixth rank, so he can stop me from advancing these pawns. Because um, if I push here, he takes with check. It's also the unfortunate position of my king. Uh, but even if the king weren't there, let's see, if I push, he takes. I push again, he can put the rook behind the pawn. So in this configuration, black can stop those pawns uh, with just his rook. But it's important that uh, his king is out of play. His king is over here, having just gathered up my rook, and I can play f4. I have extra pawns, and this is enough to win. His king is too far away, and these pawns are just going to overpower the rook. So a nice example of winning with uh, pawns against a rook. Uh, but he could have gone for that. That would have been probably the best, the best uh, chance for uh, black here. But uh, with good play, I'm still winning. So anyway, he grabbed here. Got my advanced pawn. I was about to, I was about to advance it and force a trade anyway. I grabbed this pawn with check. He brings his king over here, and I get the c pawn. And now I'm just uh, four pawns up, and I just need to try and provoke some kind of trade. And um, eventually, at this point, he resigned. It looks like um, 
the well at one point is that he can't double on the back rank like he wants to because I'll come in here with the check and that will actually force his king to the back rank and then I'm free to push these pawns so pretty straightforward win from here uh, so anyway interesting game hope you guys like this video leave any comments you have in the section below and I will see you again soon bye